Even though VBT10 Phantom Dragon Aeon supports four different clans, we all know that this is Shadow Paladin, the booster set. Phantom Dragon Aeon is the 10th main booster, which is a continuation of the main booster line we've seen in the third year of the V era. This set contains support for Shadow Paladin, Tachikaze, Spike Brothers, and Mega Conley. Once again, this focuses on the G era boss units as this set brings back Luart, Gaia Emperor, Rising Nova, and Dark Phase Ghidorah. But as an extra bonus, we also see the return of the original boss unit of Shadow Paladin. Phantom Blaster Overlord, giving us the complete lineup for this set's 5 VRs. This set once again creates a low rarity budget deck, which this time is the true Ancient Dragon archetype for Tachikaze. This archetype revolves around front triggers as all true Ancient Dragons can gain an additional critical when you drive check a front trigger. But you will see them in action once we cover the individual cards in the Tachikaze set review, as well as the budget decks for this set. This set contains 83 new cards and 8 reprints for a total of 91 cards. These cards are divided into 5 VRs, 11 triple R's, 13 double R's, 18 rares and 44 commons. Of those 91 rares, Tachikaze, Spike Brothers and Mega Connolly all gets 22 cards. But you guessed it, it wouldn't be Shadow Paladin in the set if they wouldn't get some kind of privilege. And no, 2 VRs wasn't enough as they also get a total of 24 new cards. Now for the 91th card, we've got the brand new order that is Halo of Bonds Solidar Bengal. Now this is quite an interesting order card as it allows you to put a card from your hand into the soul to then fetch a card from the top 3 of your deck. Because this is a great one order, we can use this right from the start and it allows us to increase the consistency of our deck by a little bit. Of course, this isn't the most powerful order card we've seen, but it's definitely a playable card nonetheless. Making a minus one for a card from the top three might sound bad, but if you play a combo deck, this could actually help you get to your pieces, or even if you're really soul dependent, then that minus is less hurtful as it could potentially enable you to do something else. If you've seen my gun salute budget deck, then you might realize that a card like this could have a function in that deck. But the other aspect of this card could also have a beneficial effect. It allowing you to reveal the card means you could synergize this with Susano as he uses Ichikishima and Goddess of the Sun Amaterasu. So the inherent skill itself is decent enough, but the extra layers on top of this card allows it to be practical in many different strategies. As for the special parallels in this set, we've got quite a lot. We have 3 Another Secret Rares, 36 SPs and 1 Reissue. The 3 Another Secret Rares are the main units for Shadow Paladin, which are Phantom Blaster Overlord, Dragheart Luard and Drag Wizard Morfessa. The 33 of the 36 SPs can be found in the 5 different SP clan packs, which each pack revolving around one of the 5 different VRs of the set. As for the remainder 3 SPs, they can only be found as separate SPs in random packs. Then on top of that, we also have the return of the special reissue reprints. These are triple R foiling reprints of older cards that sometimes comes with a new artwork and are slotted at a fixed four copies per case. And this time it's for the great free searcher for Shadow Paladin, Charizing Knight Brenrin. Yes, it's truly a Shadow Paladin set as they not only got all three another secret rares and the reissue reprint, but they also got two different SP clan packs. You know what they say? Edge Boys truly sells. Now with that said, let's start things off with a bang as we dive into the main clan of this set, the clan which is covered on the artwork, which is of course Shadow Paladin. Dragheart Luard is back and he's bigger than he ever was before. He brings back the old ritual playstyle where he uses great ones as prime source of power and makes effective use of his toolbox capabilities. And on top of that, he gains full control over his empowered form of Drag Driver Luard that paired off with his trusted companions Abyssal Owl, Drag Wizard Morfessa, Leofall and Nice, and Luard is more powerful 
than ever before. The Ward isn't the only tyrant awakening from the depths of Shadow Paladin as Phantom Blaster Dragon evolves into his ultimate form, Phantom Blaster Overlord. Overlord channels the dark powers of blasters and it uses it to overwhelm any foe that dares to oppose him. That empowered with the new superior ride chain allows Shadow Paladin to tap into powers which were unthinkable before this dark dragon awoke in this world. This set provides Shadow Paladin with 24 new cards, 2 VRs, 3 triple R's, 4 double R's, 4 rares and 11 commons, from which 2 are reprint triggers. Shadow Paladin also get 3 new triggers, a new draw, heal and a sentinel critical trigger. They also get a new starter and a double crit grade 2 vanilla. The main focus of this support is around the new Luar deck and its grade 1 toolbox. We also see some small support for the upgraded blaster deck with Phantom Blaster Overlord and some generic support left over. This set for Shadow Paladin didn't really give us a whole lot of interesting cards that could be used outside of the scope they were intended. Yes we got many different grade ones that could be used for Luar or even combined with the main and Morthessa is an amazing card that can give any Shadow Paladin deck access to that one extra attack, but we don't really have a card that could revolutionize the clan to some extent, or could open up the window for future possibilities. But that said, there is one card that could become insanely strong in the future for Shadows, and that is Drag Wizard Leophil. This card is the first actual card that allows us a superior call a grade 1 from deck in the early game that isn't tied to a grade 3 or to a specific archetype, meaning this card could become a staple very fast. It can be paired with Black Shade's Charon to get the superior call for the cost of a Soul Blast instead of a Counter Blast. But the more important interaction is that Leophil allows us to search out the main, which can search out another 5k power card, allowing us to gain access to our advantage engine without having to draw into it in the first place. Now I know that Namain is banned to be played in a Luar deck, but that means that Leophil's true potential will come out the moment we get a new boss unit for Shadows that allows us to play with Namain again. And besides that, Leophil will only become better the more and more grade 1s the clan gets, as long as we won't see any other early game generic grade 1 superior colors. Now for the special parallels, we have a total of 3 another secret rares, 12 SPs and 1 reissue reprint. The 12 SPs are found in the two clan SP packs, one features the new Luar deck and the other is around the new Phantom Blaster Overlord engine. Shadows also has the reissued version of Charis Ignite Brendan, which is also an SP in the Luar SP pack. And finally, the three another secret rares are Phantom Blaster Overlord, Dragard Luart and Drag Wizard Morfessa. Shadow Paladin new support is incredibly powerful and is bound to accelerate them to the top spot in the current meta. But they aren't the only ones with some new tricks that allows them to act fast, as the ancient dragons of Planet Cray are closing in fast. Emperor Dragon Gaia Emperor takes the equip gauge mechanic for a complete different spin. Where in the past we saw old classic re-standing skills with Anger Blader, Gaia and his support units allows us to multi-tag with the units that are underneath the equip gauge themselves, allowing us to surprise our opponent with the unknown. This multi-tech playstyle is empowered by Gaia as he allows you to empower your entire board with some massive power buffs, allowing you to not only hit fast, but also to hit really hard. This new Tachikaze truly are the tyrants of the battlefield as they engorge anything that moves, be it friend or foe. This set provides Tachikaze with 22 new cards, 1 VR, 3 triple R's, 3 double R's, 4 rares, and 11 commons, from which 2 are reprint triggers. Tachikaze also got 3 new triggers, a new draw, heal, and sentinel critical trigger. They also get a new starter, a 15k shield grade 1, and the generic grade 3 searcher. This set gives us some generic support as well as the core cards for the new Gaia Emperor deck. But quite a sizable chunk is dedicated towards the brand new true ancient dragon archetype, which provides the clan not only with a new playstyle, but also a budget friendly alternative. Speaking of budget friendly, this set gives us a common grade 3, which in my opinion is widely underappreciated. Gunfire Dragon Ballistic Amalga is a field wipe in the making, which costs you effectively nothing. Being able to clear units for free is incredibly powerful and this card is no exception. And generating gauges isn't even a problem these days as we have many units that can create gauges and also allowing us to place them wherever we want, allowing us to fuel this card 
turn after turn. And now with the added consistency of the Great Free Searcher makes this card actually that much better than if it was a Grade 2. So don't underestimate the power of this card and always keep an eye open for this card even with future support as it's the most versatile piece of removal the clan has to date. As for the special parallel slots we have a total of 9 SPs for the clan. 7 of which are found in the clan SP pack and the other 2 can be pulled as separate SPs which are True Ancient Dragon Blade Ramus and Zelda. Horn Dragon Dilo for Pyro. Tachikaze got a powerful new engine and some interesting support cards which could become vital key pieces with the right support. While Tachikaze is running rampant on the battlefield, Spike Brothers rushing in to tackle all of its opponents. Exceptional Expertise Rising Nova changes the game for Spike Brothers. We no longer play with one Vanguard, but in fact we play with three different Vanguards at the same time, as Rising Nova can copy the skills of two other great frees, allowing us to combine two powerful units to create the most insane combos you can imagine, and with the added new roster of powerful great frees to fuel this and the new consistency cards makes Rising Nova an exceptional strong deck. This set provides Spike Brothers with 22 new cards, 1 VR, 2 triple R's, 3 double R's, 5 rares and 11 commons, from which 2 are reprint triggers. Spike Brothers also get 3 new triggers, a new draw, heal and a sentinel crit trigger. They also got a new starter, a 15k shield grade 1 vanilla and the generic grade 3 searcher. The main bulk of the support goes towards the new Rising Nova deck, either in the form of new grade 3's or in consistency cards. We also see some new general Cypheed supports, which can be seen as generic support, but in actuality Rising Nova support in disguise. And of course we have truly some generic cards for any Spike Brothers deck. Now while we're on the topic of cards that are generic support and also are support for specific grade 3 while being Rising Nova support in disguise, there is a Rising Nova support card that is actually an amazing generic support card and that is Ambush Dexter. I can speak with 100% certainty that this card is insane because this is a split Pegasus that can be used on turn 2. It allows us to use our deck as a gigantic toolbox and as an added bonus over Split Pegasus, this card gives us soul instead of sending the card back to the deck. But for people who weren't around during the GR where Zodiac Time Beast was king, this card allows us to put a grade 2 into the soul to then superior call 2 Brockies to the field, which both become 20k attackers and one of them is is boosted by this guy. So that is an insanely powerful play made possible by this single card. But you could also shove a great free into the soul and you can then call down two Juggernaut Maximum which become 23k units and one boosted by this unit makes your columns 10k, 23k and 31k on turn 2. Which means every attack hits over defensive trigger even if every damage is a trigger. This card has endless possibilities and will only become more powerful the more and more support will come out for Spike Brothers. Now for the special parallel slots we have a total of 7 SPs for the clan which are all found in the SP clan pack for Spike Brothers. This new wave of support is probably the most generic support in the entire set and even though Spike Brothers might not be the direct winner of this set, it's very likely that over time they might come out on top just because of the foundations that were laid today. While every clan so far has been moving at a rapid pace, it's about to come to a crawl as Mega Conley is shutting down any form of movement. Evil Governor Darkface Gredora returns to Vanguard as she brings in a brand new mechanic that's sure to put a stop to anyone's plan. These new cradle markers are rendering any unit useless while at the same time provides Gredora with more and more resources. The longer the game goes on, the more and more powerful she becomes and with the help of her many subjects, she can easily render the biggest army of Kray useless as they already stepped into her web of doom. This set provides Mega Conley with 22 new cards, 1 VR, 3 triple R's, 3 double R's, 4 rares and 11 commons, from which 2 are reprint triggers. Mega Conley also get 3 new triggers, a new draw, heal and sentinel crit, they also get a new stutter, a 12k grade 2 vanilla and a generic grade 3 searcher. Most of the support goes towards a brand new cradle mechanic which allows us to render our opponent's units useless while also giving us the opportunity to create more card advantage. We'll go in depth into these markers during the Mega Colony set review as well as the Gredora deck spotlight. As for the rest of the support 
we also get some new machining cards as well as a new mill grade 3 unit. This time around there isn't really a specific card that I want to highlight for Mega Conley as there isn't really a unique card in this set because this set is divided into archetype support and most of the cradle cards are in the basic design as they are laying the foundations for this new playstyle. That said, the cradle markers itself brings a unique aspect to the game for a multitude of reasons but we'll cover that in the future videos as it's better explained with the various cards that create them and utilize them. In the special parallel slots we have a total of 8 SPs for the clan, 7 of which are found in the clan SP pack. The one that can be found as a separate SP is Machining, Meteor, Bullet. Mega Conley is one of those clans that keeps switching from playstyles at every new support wave. But we finally have a playstyle that looks very promising. Now if only Bushiroad sticks to their guns and keeps supporting the Cradle deck in the future expansion. Now it's time to unveil which different decks we're gonna feature in the upcoming deck spotlights. And of course that's are going to be the big 5 VR boss units with the respective deck around them and the order that we're gonna do them on the channel is we're gonna start off with the big bad himself which is Draghard Luart so we're gonna discuss all the intricate combos all the interactions with all the different great ones and whatnot in that deck spotlight so sit back and relax as Luart is coming up very soon but from Luart we go straight into the other boss unit for Shadow Paladin as the next deck spotlight we're gonna feature on the channel is the one for Phantom Blaster Overlord even though this is is somewhat of the second rate VR for Shadow Paladin in this set. It is still a very interesting boss unit that enables us to do some interesting plays and a different kind of style on the Shadow Paladin archetype. Then once we're done with Shadow Paladin we dive straight into the Ancient Realm as we're gonna cover the deck spotlight for Tachikaze with Emperor Dragon Gaia Emperor. Once again an Excel deck that excels in multi attacks but this time we have a different spin on the whole equip gauge for Tachikaze as we're now utilizing these equip gauges for the multi attack potential itself. So once again a very interesting deck to discuss. Then from the dinos we go into the Dark Zone Sport League as we're gonna dive into the brand new Spike Brothers deck with exceptional expertise Rising Nova. And this is a very interesting deck as it's basically Gastille for Spike Brothers on Great Freeze. And with that said you know that a lot of wacky interactions can happen as we basically are smashing three Great Freeze into one particular unit and that will be our Frankenstein boss unit unit itself. And finally to round up all the deck spotlights for this set we're gonna end it off with Mega Conley with their new insect waifu that is of course evil governor dark face Gordora which introduces a brand new playstyle with the cradle markers. So that bounds to be a very interesting episode as we're gonna explore all the different nooks and crannies and webbings of this particular cradle marker and what it can mean for the clan and Vanguard as a whole. So if you're interested in any of these deck spotlights then definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell button to update it for future videos as these videos are coming to the channel very very soon and you definitely do not want to miss out on the great content which these videos will provide. This video has been brought to you by lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash Insider. You guys are amazing. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can simply go to patreon.com slash Insider and become a patron today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Time Leap and I see you guys in the next one.